you know, the, the, the problems are now much, much bigger, of course. So we had, what, U.S. debt around 50 trillion at that time. I'm talking about total U.S. debt. And now we are approaching, um, well, well, approaching 90 trillion. And so, I, and it's the same with central bank debt and the Fed debt and the deficits, et cetera. So, so the, the problems have now grown exponentially uh, because if debt doubles, uh, risk doesn't just double, it grows exponentially. Uh, on top of that, you know, we're not seeing the figures, but I'm, I'm uh, because they're not reported properly, but derivatives, I'm quite certain that that is growing now, especially over the counter derivatives. They're growing also at a rate where I, I would be surprised if it's less than two, two uh, quadrillion at this point. Mm. And this is where, you know, as I wrote in my last article, this is where the, the mega manipulators come in. Federal banks uh, are creating totally false markets because uh, normally if you have demand, for high demand for credit, you would have high interest rates. Mm. But here we, we have high demand for credit because it's cheap, it's free. Um, uh, and interest rates are also staying at zero or just above zero. Uh, so therefore, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and things that don't make sense are not going to last. This has lasted a lot longer than anyone would have believed, and certainly longer than I ever could believe. Um, uh, still, I think now everything is coming together. Um, and you know this inflation that uh, we have been waiting for, because we know we've had, we've had massive asset inflation for, for um, a, a very long time now, uh, but it hasn't the way that inflation is calculated. It's not sh- it's not shown in consumer prices. Now that's coming because you know it's inevitable that with the amount of uh, growth we've seen in money supply, you know, in in pure uh, Austrian economic terms, inflation means increase in money supply, and we've seen exponential growth in money supply, and eventually that will show through through in, in inflation. And that's what we're going to see in the coming years. So as I said, you know, coming back to the bond market, bond market is not going to, yields are not going to stay at 0%. We've seen the, the 10 year going up already. Mm-hmm. And that's just the beginning. I think we're going to see rates. I lived through the uh, 1970s. I li- lived in the UK at the time. And I, as I stressed many times, I, my first mortgage was 21% uh, in 74. Uh, and, you know, how many people do you think can today cope with 21% interest rate yes, and not on a mortgage? <laughs> not many. <laughs> well, a, a debt crisis is guaranteed. That, uh, it's only a question of when. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, cent- central banks are, are uh, between a rock and a hard place. That, you know, they don't know which way to turn. Of course, they should, with these inflation rates we're seeing now, uh, and with these enormously, the enormously big gap between uh, inf- inflation and, and interest rates. So we get this very big um, n- number of negative real rates, which of, as we both or all know, it, it is really a, a wonderful from precious metals investors. And you know, to have this gap now 5% or more, um, in, uh, and if you take the real inflation f- figures, which are certainly more, a lot higher than 7%, then now you have the gap is probably 7, 8% uh, uh, the, uh, the negative real rate. So that, that, therefore, you know, and, and I've always said that um, in the end, you know, you have, uh, you have bonds issued by central banks and governments around the world. Most of them are bankrupt. Most of them can never repay the debt. Most of them can only continue to function by issuing more fake money in, in the form of debt that will never be repaid. And the only, only way they can keep on doing this um, is for, from their point of view is to have zero interest rates. But, you know, there will be a point when borrowers or investors in these bonds will say, this is it. I'm not going to give bankrupt governments uh, money at, at between zero uh, or even negative, in some cases, zero. Uh, and let's say 2% or um, in, in, in the form of uh, the 10-year in, in the US or just under. Uh, I'm not going to give you any money. You're... you're Offer risk and you're not paying me any return on that risk. Why should I give you any money? And therefore, I think that uh, they uh, always believe that the long end of the, of the debt market will be the one uh, which will suffer first. And we've already seen the start of that, which means that long rates will start going up and they are already. And, yeah. and, uh, and then um, after they, the long rates will eventually pull the short rates up. 
And, and that's, that's coming. It's only a matter of time. Coming back to, to Europe and Southern Europe, none of these countries can afford it. Greece, Italy, Spain, France, etc. cetera. Um, Germany can afford it for a while, but that's about the only country. Uh, yeah. So, so you know, th- this is why we are going to have a debt crisis. Interest rates have turned. You know, this this cycle was slightly longer than the last cycle, which was 35 years, um, and this one was a few years longer. But nevertheless, we turned. We are going to see rates going up now for decades, most yeah. probably. Uh, it, it's never a straight line, and, and you know, this will be an enormous fight between the market and the central banks. I think the central banks will lose in the end because they, they as I said, the, the long end of the market will start determining uh, what rates will be and, and the short end will follow and the central banks will not be able to control these rates anymore. We all know that they are clueless. Uh, yeah. We all know that they never anticipate anything. Uh, and we know that they are always behind the curve. Yeah. Uh, now, the pr- problem is the curve is telling them <laughs> in no uncertain terms that we are in a period of high inflation and we need to have higher interest rates. Because, you know, just think about the bond market which, which start uh, uh, to fall. I mean, that's the biggest bubble in, in, in ever, the bond market. Mm-hmm. And then combine that with the stock market. And, you know, they can't, they can't support the stock market more because anyway, nobody's going to believe in, in the next round of fake money, uh, maybe for a day or two. But, but then um, nobody's going to believe that, that this is money anymore. And it's amazing that the, the world has believed it for such a long time. We know why, because they, they all have, everybody who's in financial market has a vested interest uh, to play the game, the, the fake game. Um, and of course, the, the ones who have money, as we know, have made absolute fortunes um, in, in the last uh, a few years. I mean, I, I was showing in my last article about how, Warren Buffett in 1994, I think it was, was the richest man in the U.S. with $8 billion, $8 billion. Now, new companies have been created since then, for, you know, five, six, seven, seven companies. Each one of the owners of these companies is worth 100, $100 million or $200 million, $100 billion, $200 billion. Well, you know, I, I think we are giving these central banks too much credit. They've had such an easy time for such for, for many years now uh, in totally controlling money supply and interest rates. Sure, people say bank, governments can never go bankrupt, but you know the, the printing unlimited amounts of money is a technical bankruptcy, whatever else yeah. they want to call it. Default uh, by another you know, name, if, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and therefore they, they, they are already bankrupt now. And the only way to, they know how to do it is just to crank up the printing presses. That's not, that's not a real economy. We are in a fake economy. You know, it is wizardry by, by the central banks. Uh, it's only because uh, the, 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 the kid investors that are following the wizard, uh, you know, they, 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 they love to hear and love to see what they do. But, but at some point, um, they will be very disappointed uh, when the whole thing collapses, and it will do. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges, but, and this is a big but, 
you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy, but the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.